Hello, my beautiful buds. Welcome back to my channel, Sprouts with Joy. My name is Joy, and if you like to talk about plants, you're in the right place. Now, today I wanted to just show you my philodendron collection. I know I personally love watching collection videos and just seeing how other people's collections grow and progress over time. So yeah, this is my philodendron collection in 2022. So uh, I guess I can just start. <laughs> let's see, let's see, which one do I do first? Oh gosh, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and start with uh, this one right over here because it's right here. <laughs> this is my philodendron Brazil. This is legitimately one of my favorite plants, particularly one of my favorite plants that you can find at a very affordable price. I just find that the variegation is so beautiful. Let me find a good leaf. Look at how pretty and varied the variegation is. Every single leaf is completely different and you have the potential to get some really, really beautiful, beautiful peachy stems and really big leaves depending on the way that you grow it. So I absolutely love this plant. I actually have a second philodendron in Brazil and it's just a testament to how much they can vary from plant to plant. So right here is the second one. Obviously it's much smaller, but these are two entirely different plants. Um, like this one even has some entirely light green leaves, like right here. Isn't that so cool? Honestly, the leaves just look painted on. I absolutely adore this plant. I think this one might need a water soon, but it's so cool. And honestly, so I love Philodendron Brazilian Terracotta in particular because it has the perfect green tones to complement the orange of the terracotta. And I just, mm, it's very pleasing to me. All right, next I'm gonna talk about my Philodendron Silver Sword Babies. They're so little, but they're both putting out new leaves. And they are just, they're precious. I, I really have a soft spot for silver foliage in general. So if you combine that with a philodendron, yes. I got these as probably, they were probably about half this size. They were tiny little seedlings. And honestly, they've grown very, very reliably and very, very quickly, especially like I got them. When did I get them? I wanna say I got them in only like October or November, probably closer to November around that range. So all the growth they've given me has been through the winter. And you know, I've moved them around a lot. I relatively recently repotted them in with this moss pole. So eventually I will attach this guy as well. But I am so excited to get those just long, beautiful, beautiful leaves. Silver Sword Philodendron is absolutely, I feel like I'm gonna say, they're all my favorites because uh, philodendron in general is a favorite genus of mine. So, you know. But just look at this plant. Yes, I still need to remove the stickers from this. I just, for some reason, they have not been, like, look at this. It's like one piece at a time when I try to remove it. And it's just an absolute pain. So. I don't know. I also need to do a better job of keeping this moss pole moist, but I think I, despite that, I do see some aerial roots developing on this node right here. Um, just like the tiniest little nubbin. And it's just like, oh, is there moisture? Maybe? Mm -hmm. So yeah, silver sword. Okay, so this one is kind of happy, kind of sad uh, at the same time. Uh, so I got this, little philodendron squamiferum seedling at the same time as I got the silver sword seedlings. So you can obviously see, I mean, they were about the same size um, and this one is dying. <laughs> uh, it's, it's quite sad to be honest with you, but the soil that he came in ended up just being way too compact over time. And I just didn't rescue him in time. I just didn't fully realize how compact the soil really was until I went to repot him at the same time as I repotted the silver sword philodendrons and the roots were falling apart. And I was like, hmm, that's not great. 
But if you watched my last video, you would have seen that I did, you would have seen that I did in fact get a new Philodendron Squamiferum, just in case that one doesn't work out because this was a, honestly a pretty good deal. It was $42 at one of my local plant shops. And wow, these leaves are just beautiful. This leaf literally just unfurled so it's not hardened off. It's very like, and honestly, I think I might need to give them a water very soon, but my absolute favorite is these fuzzy petioles. Just, oh, I just, wow. Just look, oh my gosh. Uh, I'm sure you've heard me say that fuzzy petioles are one of my absolute favorite characteristics that a plant can have. So I would love to collect all of the fuzzy petiole philodendrons just because Wow, oh my gosh. I think it's so cool. I know it, it kind of turns some people off a little bit, but I personally absolutely love it. I think it's so fun. And this leaf shape is great too. Obviously it'll mature more over time. This is just an absolutely fantastic plant. Now, speaking of fuzzy petioles, uh, this is the philodendron fuzzy petiole. <laughs> And I know he looks a little bit sad in general. Uh, I've kind of been through a journey with this plant. I purchased him with root rot, so I had to kind of just start from scratch, cut off all the roots, root them again, and re-root them in water. But I recently potted him up again, and this one leaf right here is looking as fine as ever. When I purchased him, he had some other leaves, but unfortunately they fell off during the trauma of root rot, uh, and this new leaf that has been trying to come in from the beginning, but you know, it's not, it's not going to be very pretty because it's been through a lot. So I'm really counting on, I think this is a new growth point right here. So I'm really counting on uh, that, but all right, just also take a look at these fuzzy petioles. They're not quite as pronounced as the squamiferum right now, but it's not, I don't think it's quite as mature, but I absolutely love the pillowy leaves of the philodendron fuzzy petiole. It's just very elegant. And I just can't wait for this boy to have a comeback and live in his full glory, you know, because we really have been through a lot. And I'm sure you can relate to that. There might be some plants that you've just been through it with. This is one of those plants for me and I'm very, very attached because I worked so hard to rescue him and I just really hope it works out in the long run. You probably noticed that behind me there is also a philodendron. So let's just get him over with. So this is my philodendron heteracium or Hartley philodendron. It's like the standard green philodendron. Uh, the philodendron Brazil is also technically a philodendron heteracium, I believe, but it has a different variegation. So it's called philodendron Brazil. Um, but this is just like your straight up green and this philodendron has grown for me so, so much. And at first, you know, he was a little bit slower. I did get him from Home Depot. Uh, I honestly can't even remember when, it's just been a forever. And I did split him into two different pots. So the other pot of it is just up in my bedroom and like honestly a really low light corner and he's still spitting out growth. Um, so if you have any, like obviously he'll do best in bright and direct light, like most plants particularly, I mean, I think most philodendron generally would enjoy that. Um, most philodendron also can be kind of fairly low light tolerant, if, especially if they just have pure green leaves. But this one I found, this is one that I have experience with and I can vouch for the fact that it, I mean, it won't thrive, but it does pretty dang well for a long time. So, you know, the leaves will get smaller over time if you're, you know, not attentive to that. And you know, he does like to climb. So if you notice these leaves decrease in size since he's trailing and not climbing. And honestly, this corner doesn't, it gets some decent light. He's still about 10 feet away from his south facing window over here and seven feet away from, a, a small west-facing window over there. So, 
He's not directly by a window is what I'm saying. This, in spite of all that, he grows. Maybe not as fast as he would if he were in higher light, but he grows. There's something to these simple, elegant green leaves and it can be easy to overlook this plant, but it's just, Philodendron heteracium is just such a classic. Okay, and to be completely honest with you, I, can, I made like a list of philodendrons and I completely forgot to put this one on my list, but it's right next to me and I just remembered. Um, so thank goodness, but this is my philodendron heteracium lemon lime. So again, it's a philodendron heteracium much like the Brazil and this guy right here, but it has just different coloring. So it has this beautiful, very bright neon, if you will, yellowish green coloring. And this one's honestly trailing quite a bit. But if you expose this one to high light, this will also get the peachy stems, kind of like the philodendron in Brazil. And I like this one a lot, just looking at the coloring. And again, I really like it paired with the terracotta. I don't know, just the way that this plant in particular lays, it's not, like not all lemon lime philodendron will do this, but like mine specifically cascades like this. And that's something, that's a trait that I, love in trailing philodendron if it happens to work out. If they're not full enough or if they're not getting enough light, they'll get kind of leggy and might not replicate this look. But when it does have this look, I mean, honestly, you can't even really see the pot. Um, and I think it's so cool. I'm a big fan of this plant. It's not my absolute favorite philodendron, but it's a very solid plant and I love having it right here in this little cozy corner, so. Okay, next I'm actually gonna show you guys a plant that I have not showed you yet, and that's the Philodendron Pink Princess. Um, so I really, really love pink and plants, but historically this plant has been pretty overpriced for how much of this plant there actually is, and paired with that, the variegation that you get is normally pretty bad. Like, you know, you know what I mean? But, I was very, very blessed by a friend that has connections and he knows that I love plants, so he regularly will just kind of give me plants. Uh, they're normally pretty common plants, and I'm like, oh yeah, sure, I'll take care of them and whatever, it'll be fun. Um, but <laughs> one day he just dropped this on me and I was like, um, what? <laughs> There's actually multiple plants in this one pot. Um, and it has a new leaf coming in right there. And some new leaves just recently came in. Maybe you can see that. Yeah, there are some also tiny new leaves just popping out. And frankly, variegation on this is kind of incredible. Let's take a look at that leaf. Wow. Um, wow, there, there's like a little half moon situation right there. Um, and in general, like there's so much speckling, there's like some sectoral stuff, but there's, I mean, this one has some damage just because the pink does not produce chlorophyll. So sometimes they die off, but like, look, I just, what, what? So yeah, I was absolutely astounded and blessed and I, this was very recent, like maybe like three weeks ago that I got this plant. So I pot her up into this clear plastic pot just so I can keep an eye on the roots. I will get her a cash po eventually, but just what? So yeah, I have a pink princess and honestly the variegation on it is stunning. There are multiple plants in the pot. I've seen pink princesses on sale at one of my local nurseries, they just have a few come in from time to time and they're really expensive, but pretty much all the way reverted. So I never really thought I was like, it's probably never, I'm probably never gonna find a good specimen for a good price. But um, I got this one as a gift for free and it's one of the best variegations that I've ever seen on a pink princess personally. So, oh dear Lord, okay. I can't even, I, I made a whole stinking moss pull for this guy, which is probably a mistake, but whatever. Um, so this is my philodendron brantianum. I got this guy from Lowe's for a pretty good deal, like $13. And uh, there are lots of fungus gnats on him. Okay, 
Anyways, I love, love the leaves on a good specimen of Philodendron brantianum. Like they are silvery and sparkly. And as I mentioned before, I love silvery foliage. As you might notice, some of these leaves are a little bit deformed and sad. And honestly, a lot of that is because, look, can you see how that leaf is just stuck in there? And this leaf is stuck. I had heard about this phenomenon with Philodendron brantianum, although this leaf looks like it might turn out okay. But yeah, I had heard about this phenomenon. I heard about this phenomenon. I heard about this phenomenon with Philodendron brantianums or Philodendron brandies. Um, where a lot of people struggled with them just putting out torn leaves or getting caught and stuff like that. I currently have it in the highest humidity that I can offer it and it's still doing that torn leaf thing with some of the leaves, not all of them. So I'm really hoping that I'll be able to uh, figure out a solution. Honestly, it could very well be that it's winter time and it's just some plants don't like the winter. Someday I might put it in a terrarium or if I get a greenhouse or a greenhouse cabinet, this will definitely go in there. I would have to switch up the moss pool situation or maybe I'll just take propagations and test that out. I don't know. I would love to test out different ways of making the brandy actually behave. So far it's kind of like a 50-50. Some leaves come out fine and other leaves just get caught and rip themselves to shreds. So, but as a plant, I mean, it is a stunning plant if you can get past its behavior. Okay, so this one is my Philodendron Painted Lady. Definitely another one of my absolute favorites. Now she's still acclimating, still growing. You know, she's gonna lose this leaf soon. It's an old leaf, that's fine, but there's a new leaf coming in right there. I love this pot that she's in. I love this little moss pole that she's got. I'm excited to watch her climb it. But yeah, I just absolutely love... I love the coloring of the leaves. It's very, it's an understated type of variegation. And I just think that it's so, so gorgeous. And I love these like pinkish, reddish petioles. So far, she hasn't given me a ton of new growth. I think this is the first new leaf that she's gotten, but I got her relatively recently. So she's still kind of figuring out my environment and deciding if she likes it. But I really like her, so I hope that we can get along. <laughs> okay, so this right here is my philodendron Mia, which she's a super fun philodendron. There's nothing like incredibly unique about her other than, I mean, she's got green leaves and she's an incredibly fast grower, oh my goodness. But you know, there's something really nice about just having a plain green plant, in my opinion, because sometimes you can kind of get lost in a sea of variegation and you know holes in leaves and all that kind of stuff so there's something nice about nice simple leaves that are just like paddle shaped and you know this is kind of more of a mounding philodendron i believe i've heard some people also mention like a green princess i don't think that they're the same thing but philodendron is what this was labeled as it's supposedly an unknown hybrid that came out kind of recently but you know other people think it's just a reverted birkin or something like that i don't really know but i got her at my local nursery and she's honestly just chilling extremely low maintenance like literally i've never had any issues with her she's in a relatively kind of low light situation and she's still spitting out lots of growth doesn't seem to mind at all Okay, and this right here is what I believe is my Philodendron Dark Lord. And this is the newest leaf, although it was trying to come out for a very long time. So it's a little bit sad looking, but there's this new leaf that's coming in and I am so excited to see what it looks like. Sorry, that's a little, your leaf is a little dusty, sir. Anyways, so I got this guy as an unrooted cutting. He originally had, oh, maybe like four leaves or something, like a four leaf cutting, but it was just one node. And 
oh my gosh it's honestly such a roller coaster like he took such a long time to root he was losing leaves and like getting all droopy and honestly i think it took like an entire month before he had any semblance of root so honestly super super stressful and also i say i believe this is a dark lord because it was sold to me as a dark lord but since it's more juvenile it's honestly it's kind of hard to tell apart from some of your other like bloody mary philodendrons and red emeralds although it doesn't really look like a red emerald to me like the leaves are too dark for that in my opinion but yeah i've kind of been through it with him but eventually he started putting out roots and now he seems to be really really happy and my observation he's honestly a pretty vocal plant like when he needed when he needs to be watered he like droop a little bit i mean i think he's a super cool plant and honestly i'm just excited to see what he looks like when he's like big and beautiful. So this right here is a philodendron florida ghost. Oh my goodness. So th this leaf is starting to fade back down to a green and so is this leaf. Those are the two newest leaves but I have them in a very highlight situation now so I'm hoping that the newer leaves that he puts out will be like bright ghosty white. You know as pasty as my skin this winter white, you know? So <laughs> I love all of the philodendron Florida variations out there. Like just the Florida green, the Florida beauty, the Florida bronze. They're all so, so fun. So I'd love to get all of them someday, but I went ahead and started off with the Florida ghost. And look at those bumpy, bumpy petioles. I believe this is a cross between the Padatum and the Squamiferum. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's the case. Or at least the Florida Green specifically is, but then these, this is a cultivar off of the Florida Green because they found that there was a Florida Green that did that. Yeah, I just adore the leaf shape. And if you didn't know, I am from South Florida. So this is kind of like a little taste of home for me. Just knowing that there's a philodendron that shares the name of my home state, I think that's pretty cool. So look, this leaf is a little bit damaged because when it first came home, my cats were like, what's this? And I was like, no, but it was too late. And they had just been like, they're curious. Hello. Oh gosh. I just spilled some water because I recently watered him. But hi, you can't really see me, can you? Um, hello? Can I even get this entire plant in the frame? Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so. This right here is my philodendron green Congo. And he's an awkward fella. He's very gangly. Um, the leaves are bigger than my head and quite beautiful. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm spilling water again. You may be wondering why I have such a large and awkward philodendron, but honestly, I love him. He's very lovable. Uh, I need to name him to be honest because he has so much character and he's so unique. I just, he needs a name. So please let me know in the comments below what name I should give this gangly philodendron green Congo. Honestly, I feel like this is such an underrated plant. Like, look, even the red Congo, when they get mature, they get leaves like this and they are massive and gorgeous. I know Kaylee Ellen recently talked about her variegated green Congo and that is absolutely mwah, but we cannot forget the original. Okay, so my mother-in-law has owned a green Congo and she bought it pretty large too, but she's owned a green Congo for like four years. She had no idea what the heck it was, but she just bought it from a nursery and brought it home and has just been loving on it ever since. And of course me being a huge plant nerd, I was like, dude, you have like a philodendron green congo that's huge and beautiful. And she's like, oh, cool. One day I was like, have you ever repotted that? And she was like, I don't think so. So we checked out the roots and yeah, it was very root bound and it was huge. So this was one out of like five plants in the pot all together and splayed out just like 
We repotted it into a much better soil mixture and a slightly bigger pot. And she was like, hey, you should take a piece of it. So I pulled out one of the fully rooted plants. I felt a little bit sad to remove it from its brethren, but you know, it's okay. When I brought him home, he was just splayed out completely and down, but I have been gradually, gradually training him on these bamboo stakes just <laughs> if you've seen my other videos you've probably seen how like i had them taped to the wall via these stakes and stuff and it was a whole ordeal that has taken several weeks but now he can stand by himself with the stakes he, do he doesn't need to lean against the wall um but i have no idea where the heck i'm going to actually practically keep him in my house this is a very interesting situation i will find a long-term solution but for now this is this is how he is <laughs> So yeah, he's a very fun guy and you know, you should ask him to prom because you know, a lot of people just overlook how fun he is. All right, let me make sure this, this might be my last one. Oh no, it's not. It's not my last one. I have two more, two more. And again, I know I've said this like five times, but these two I think are like in my top five philodendrons. So give me one second. This is my philodendron micans. And uh, wow, wow, wow. This plant is so full, so lush, so beautiful. I love velvety leaved philodendron. I don't think I have any other velvet, no, I don't have any other velvet leaved philodendrons, but they seem to be kind of finicky from what I've heard, but the micans is like, no, I'm gonna be super carefree and easy to care for and just trail for you and give you lots of love and happiness. So that's this. I have no additional humidity or anything like that and he's been trucking along just fine. Super full, super beautiful. And I love the reddish sheen that this plant can get sometimes. And he's just trailing down. He's living his absolutely best life. Um and he's just cascading down the pot <laughs> he's hanging on the wall uh like this one but on the other side over there and yeah i'm definitely one of my not just in my top five philodendron but one of my favorite plants in general for sure you're so cool and i love you oh. i don't know if i have much else to say i've been talking for a long time so i'm getting a little bit tired <laughs> admittedly but just I, I know a lot of people appreciate Philodendron Mikans, but in case you don't yet, just look at how pretty. Oh, I love this plant. And, and honestly, so he's like up against the wall and these parts are starting to like kind of press up against the wall and are kind of like, ooh, Ooh, there's a surface so plant. Point. And I mean, I don't want wall damage, but at the same time, part of me is just like, break it, climb it if you want to. Do whatever you want. Never mind the, uh, practicalities of how I would water them, but eh, we'll just ignore that. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Ah! This is my philodendron, mame. So like, let's just look at each leaf. Wow, you're beautiful. Wow, you're beautiful. Wow, you're beautiful. And it's got just this silvery, beautiful foliage. This leaf is on its way out. And recently this plant has lost a few of its older leaves, but it has this newer leaf coming in right here that is stunning. Although I will say I am constantly paranoid that this plant has pests. So I'm just like staring at it and it looks like this new leaf has a little bit of damage to it. So I'm just like, please don't be thrippy. Please don't be thrippy. Please don't be thrippy. But I've never had thrips before, so I don't really know what to look for. So please advise if you have any thoughts or if you see anything that looks wrong. This could be mechanical damage, but I don't know. I don't know. That aside, overall, despite my um, anxiety over whether or not it has pests, this plant has been super chill and it is a crawler. So <laughs> it was given to me in this pot and I don't know why they potted it like over here. Probably should have potted it over here so that it, you know, it wouldn't like crawl out of the pot, but you know, it's fine. I will probably eventually put it into a rectangular planter just so he can crawl to his 
heart's content but yeah I think this plant is so 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 stunning I just can't get enough of the silveriness on the leaves I just think it's so beautiful I love it when new leaves come in because it's so rewarding and eventually like he has the potential to get such big gorgeous leaves and I really really hope that I can provide an environment for him where he'll just thrive and take off so far he's been stable you know he's lost some old leaves but is putting out new leaves pretty consistently so you know it's a cycle and he's still kind of acclimating because you know i got him four three months ago so it really has not been too long and again that has just been over the course of the winter so yes that is my philodendron money okay so i think that that is going to be it for this video if you enjoyed it please feel free to like and comment and subscribe because that makes my day and is super good for the growth of my channel and i love building a planting community with all of you guys and it's just it's so fun and as of this video coming out i'm almost to 500 subscribers which is super cool and that's halfway to a thousand subscribers which is like a huge milestone to get as a youtuber so mm, thank you guys so much for your support and your love just it means so much to me you have no idea if you guys want to talk about your favorite philodendrons with me i would love to chat with you in the comments i hope that you have a wonderful and blessed day Bye bye